Hello everyone, welcome back to Math with Allison. Today we're working in our sequences and series series, so we're gonna be talking about the root test. So let's go ahead and dive into it. Here is an example series that we might be working with. We have the summation k equals one to infinity of k to the power of k. Notice that we have a power of k, which is where the root test comes in. So how we use the root test is we have some value p is equal to the limit as k approaches infinity of the kth root of a sub k. So notice what would happen if we try to do that for our actual series. We have the limit as k approaches infinity of the kth root of k to the power of k. The purpose of the root test is so it gets rid of that power of k. So here we have the limit as k approaches infinity of just k. And when we plug in infinity, right, that's going to diverge to infinity. So this diverges to infinity. Now, what does that mean? Let's go ahead and take a look at the results. So first we have, if p is between 0 and 1, and it can equal 0, then the series is going to go ahead and converge, right? Now, if p is greater than 1, and that includes when p diverges to infinity, then we have that the series is going to diverge. We have one more, and that's when p is equal to 1. The test is inconclusive, and that's because sometimes p equals 1, and the series will converge, or p is equal to 1, and the series will diverge. So you have both cases, so you have to use a different test to test for the convergence or divergence. Let's go through the big idea of what's really happening in the background. So let's say we have a series, k equals 1 to infinity, of just, you know, generic terms a sub k. Of course, when we start adding them together, we get a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, but then we get when k is really large, and we get that a sub k plus a sub k plus 1 all the way down, right? So when k is very large, we have that p is approximately equal to the kth root of a sub k, right? That's when the limit as k approaches infinity is equal to that, right? Now, if I raise everything to the power of k, I get p to the power of k is approximately equal to a sub k. So notice we found what a sub k is equal to. We can also find what the rest of those terms are equal to. We have the next term, the k plus 1. We got p is approximately equal to the k plus 1 root of a sub k plus 1, right? And again, you're going to do the exact same process. You're going to raise both sides to k plus 1, and we have what that term is equal to. So let's go ahead and replace that in our series. Of course, we got those few terms that are exactly the same, but then we got p to the power of k, which replaces our a sub k, p to the power of k plus 1, which replaces our a sub k plus 1, right? And then the next one would be p to the k plus 2, right? So let's go ahead and think about that in terms of our results. If p is equal to 0, then we get those first few terms added together, and then we're just adding 0 at that point, which is why it converges, right? If we're not adding anything anymore, it's going to converge. Now, if we have p is between 0 and 1, then we get p raised to some power is becoming smaller and smaller. Like, say that p is equal to 1 half, right? 1 half to the power of, like, 100, for example, that's going to get really, really small. So those terms become so tiny that it doesn't add anything anymore. I mean, it adds a little bit, but it's bounded above, right? It's going to converge to a number because those numbers get so, so tiny, it doesn't add very much anymore. And then, of course, we have our last um, option. When p is greater than 1, that's when p to the power of k is going to get really, really big. So let's say we have p is equal to 2, right? Then we have 2 to the power of 100 plus 2 to the power of 101, so on and so forth. Those are going to get so big that it's going to forever be adding, right? And so that's why it's going to diverge. Let's go ahead and see some examples here. We have the summation k equals 1 to infinity of that whole thing to the power of k. So when you're thinking, oh, when should I apply the root test? It's when you see a power of k. It doesn't always mean that it's going to work out perfectly, but it's a good indicator of where to start. So we have a limit as k approaches infinity. We're going to take the kth root of that whole thing. So the purpose of doing that is so that power of k is going to cancel out, right? So all we're left with 4k squared minus 3 divided by 7k squared plus 6. Here, you can go ahead and use L'Hopital's if you want, or you can use the trick that we're working with a limit at infinity, right? K is approaching infinity. So this behaves the same as just taking the highest power from the numerator and the highest power from the denominator, right? They behave exactly the same at infinity. So here we have the limit as K approaches infinity. Notice the K squared divides out. So we get 4 over 7, and here the limit of a constant is just equal to that constant. If you applied L'Hopital's rule a couple times, you would get the exact same answer, 4 over 7. So we have that this right here is less than 1, which tells us by the root test that the series is going to converge. So here's our second one. We have the summation k equals 1 to infinity of 2 to the power of k. 
divided by k to the power of 10. So I see that power of k, which tells us maybe I can go ahead and apply the root test. So the limit as k approaches infinity. Another way you could write it is where you take your a sub k, so k to the power of 10, and you raise it to the power of 1 over k. That is exactly the same, right? So we get the limit as k approaches infinity. We just get 2 in the numerator, right? And then we get k to the 10 divided by k. Now we need to go ahead and manipulate this. If you know what it's equal to, that's great. I'm going to go ahead and solve out the entire thing. So I'm going to write that as 2 times k to the negative 10 divided by k. Now here's what I'm noticing. This is going to become infinity. The exponent is going to become 0. So this is like infinity raised to the power of 0, which is in determinate form, but it's not in the form where we can apply L'Hopital's. In order to use L'Hopital's, we want it to be as a fraction. So I want to take the natural log of both sides. So if I immediately did that, we would get, which this you would have to split up into the natural log of 2, right? This would become the natural log of 2 plus the natural log of k to the negative 10 divided by k. What I'm going to do in order to avoid that is I'm going to add a step. So before I do this whole thing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides by 2. So p divided by 2 is equal to the limit as k approaches infinity of, and we get k to the negative 10 divided by k. So instead of natural log of p, here we would have the natural log of p divided by 2 is equal to this whole thing. Here the 2 we divided out, and now we can go ahead and use the property of exponents, right? So what happens is that exponent of negative 10 divided by k comes to the front to multiply, and all we're taking the natural log of is k. So if you wanted to rewrite it um, in order to like fully see the fraction, you totally could, but this is already a fraction. So k approaches infinity, negative 10 times the natural log of k divided by k. Remember, we're trying to use L'Hopital, so let's make sure this approaches the appropriate indeterminate form. In the numerator, we get negative 10 times natural log of infinity. That's negative 10 times infinity, which is going to approach negative infinity, right? And then k just approaches infinity. This is indeterminate form. It is appropriate for us to use L'Hopital's. So here we get the limit as k approaches infinity. In the numerator, we get negative 10 divided by k. In the denominator, we just get 1. And so that is just going to be the fraction negative 10 divided by k. Now, as k approaches infinity, this is going to go ahead and approach 0. So we have the natural log of p divided by 2 is equal to 0. We want p all by itself. So I'm going to have both sides raise it to e, right? That e and the natural log cancel out. So we get p divided by 2 is equal to e to the power of 0 is equal to 1. Now I'll multiply that 2 over, so that way I get p all by itself, in which I get a value of 2. Now we have that p is equal to 2, and that is greater than 1. So by the root test, the series is going to diverge. So that's all I have for us today in this video. If you enjoyed it, I have many more like it, so make sure to check out my playlist. They're linked down below. Otherwise, please give this video a thumbs up and comment other problems or topics you'd like to see done. Thanks for watching.